All right. Hi guys, Spartan765 here. Um, doing a review today on the uh, on an AR-15. Sorry for the crappy camera quality. Using the phone, the camera got lost again. Um, haven't been on YouTube in a while because I've been moving, you know, going to school, working all the time, and I'm not working as much. So, time for some videos. Um, Today I'm doing a review on a gun that probably most of you who have followed my channel for the past few years thought I would probably never buy one of these. It is an AR-15. Um, as you know, I'm not a huge fan of the AR-15. Um, the AR-15 is not re not reliable enough for me. Um, unless you get a piston AR, then it's reliable enough, but it has to be a good piston AR. I'm not talking one of those cheap piston kits you can buy for 200 bucks on the internet and throw it in your fucking Rock River Arms AR-15 and think that now you have an AK-47. No. Um, you know, I get, you know, bashed about this all the time, you know, the DI system, there's nothing wrong with the DI system. The direct impingement system is a dirty fucking piece of crap. I have had experience with the direct impingement, and it is just a dirty, filthy fucking joke of a system for firing a lot of ammo. Um, after about, you know, seven, eight hundred rounds, you can start to get failure to ejects, failure to feed, because the, it, it, keep it, this is about in between about a 700 to a thousand rounds, is from what I've, you know, experienced. You'll get, you can get failure to ejects, failure to feed, due to either A, the gas tube plugging with carbon, or B, the upper receiver and lower receiver get so full of carbon from the gases that it just quits moving, operating smoothly. Um, you know, that's the big flaw of the direct impingement system. Um, the only benefit to the direct impingement system that, you know, I can think of is um, rate of fire. But that doesn't apply really to civilians like you and me because we do not own fully automatic weapons. Um, so really, as far as a civilian rifle, there's really no benefit to having a direct impingement system. Um, People say, oh, well, it's reliable if you clean it. Um, okay. Reliability is not, it's reliable if you keep it clean. Reliability is the ability of something to continue working under adverse conditions without being cleaned and without being maintained. Reliability is the measure of how long something will go before it quits working. Um, an AK-47, for example. You, there, are, there are videos on YouTube of people firing 50,000 rounds through an AK without one hiccup, without one cleaning. Um, you know, with an AR-15, you see people, usually, their gun will usually stop working in about 1,000 rounds. You know, there have been a couple videos where they've gone up to 1,500 rounds. 1,500 without, I'm talking without a hiccup. You know, as soon as it starts to hiccup, that means the gun's about to quit working. Um, but with the piston systems, if you get a good piston system, um, you can get up to 5,000, 6,000, maybe more. Um, but then again, you're really starting to get up to that upper spectrum just because of, you know, the tighter tolerances of an AR-15. Um, 5,000, 6,000 rounds. I mean, there's been guys on YouTube who've done videos. I mean, watch the AR-15 piston torture test, and that'll answer that better than I can. Um, but anyway, so to the frickin' review instead of a 20-minute lecture. Um, here we go. The only AR-15 that I would buy just because, you know, I'm very, very biased to the AK because, you know, I've never had a problem with my AK or really any AK I've ever owned as far as the function goes. Um, anyway, this here is the Sig Sawyer 516. This is a short stroke gas operated rifle. I love this rifle. I am so glad I bought it. Um, there's only one, okay, for me to buy an AR-15, I've worked on a lot of AR-15s. I've built a few AR-15s. Um, and I just really didn't like them. But, you know, there's only one thing on this rifle that I can say, you know, doesn't really bother me. It's not even a major thing. It's just a cosmetic issue. And that is, you know, with all AR-15s that have are forged receivers. Forged receivers is what you want because it makes a strong receiver. Um, when they forge the gun, there will be some, on most, 95% will come out with some little mi minor blemishes on the uh, the finish of the rifle. Not on the finish, but on, uh, beneath the finish, because they put the finish on over, so that's how you can tell about the blemishes. They're just, you see like little minor nicks and stuff, and 
you know, nothing too bad, nothing that's really easy to see, but just little blemishes. I mean, the SIG receiver has by far the fewest, I mean, that I've seen out of most AR-15s. I've seen AR-15s with a whole magwell. It's just, dun, 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 looks like a fucking Damascus aluminum fucking receiver almost. That doesn't make any sense because it's not supposed to, but describing it has a Damascus look around here. I've seen that on AR-15s. But the blemishes on these, blemishes will not affect, or, or should not affect the structural, structural integrity of the receiver. Um, very few on this, but there's still a couple. N nothing huge, so nothing you, you can't, you can only see them if you get like three inches from the gun. So, it's the only minor thing. Um, oh yeah, of course, all you guys know, weapons in this room, when I do reviews, are unloaded at all times. The only weapon that's loaded is my weapon on me my uh, carry gun. But yes, um, AR-15, very, very good rifle as far as the uh, 5, 5, or 5.16 goes. Um, it's got a 1 in 7 twist, chrome lined, um, cold hammer forged barrel. Also got a chrome lined chamber on it. Standard A2 uh, flash suppressor. Um, the barrel is uh, honestly SIG, just SIG, in my opinion, SIG go outdated on the barrel. Um, you're going to cold hammer forge barrel, one and seven twist, um, which means you're going to be better firing those heavy grain rounds, a little bit more stable, like your like your 62 grain fires 55 grain just fine too. I wouldn't really go much below that, you know, 45, 40, no. 55 is is pretty good in this rifle. 62 is optimal. You're going to get the tightest groupings. This is a very very accurate rifle. The barrel on it, like I said, SIG outdid themselves in this barrel. Um, gas block, very cool looking. It's a uh, forged steel gas block. Um, the gas system itself. Now I'm just going to do a, a very basic field strip on this here. I'm not going to take the gun apart, I'll do that in a later video, but I want to show you guys who are thinking about buying this rifle, the gas system. Alright, now the SIG utilizes a four position gas system. And I'll show you on here, as you can see, here are the ports. If you can kind of see the one on the end, this guy right here is the adverse setting. That means when you get past that, you know, like two, three thousand round mark, when you see your, your, your gun may start to hiccup, um, you switch it from the middle position, which is the normal position, to the adverse condition. It gives a little bit more gas, meaning that your gun might be a little fouled up, but your gun will keep cycling with that adverse condition. The smaller hole is the suppressor hole. This is a suppressor ready from the factory gas piston gun. Very suppressor ready. I mean like this gun, that's one thing I like about it is if you live in a state where you can own a suppressor, it's suppressor ready right out of the box. Um, the other setting is obviously you can't really see it. It's just a, um, because there's no hole, it's just an off setting. Um, I think the vent where it blocks is right there. Um, it's just an offsetting. It does not deliver gas to the gas system, and so you can fire the weapon like a straight pull bolt, um, which is kind of cool. Um, but you know, whatever. Uh, I won't ever really use that. But for those of you who are trying to literally push your AR-15, like to put, go out to a thousand meters, which is really, really, really pushing it, you usually, you usually go out to about 800 normally, is maxing it out. Um, you can do that with the uh, offsetting because you gain a little bit of velocity and a little bit of um, little bit of accuracy. But yeah, here's the uh, takedown of it. And here, you just got your cylinder. You got your piston or your plug, your gas plug. That just slides right in there. Utilizes uh, gas rings similar to what you find in an AR-15 bolt. Um, looks like a fairly reliable system. Looks like a system that won't really wear very quickly which is something that I really like about this gas system is because you can, you'll see other gas um, short stroke systems for ARs that are aftermarket that are multiple parts that are done. Well this is multiple parts but it's all contained or where the piston is loosely flying back isn't guided very well like this is the guide this is a, uh, what the hell is the name of this, the technical name of this part guide cam, or not guide cam, but this black piece here, essentially what I'm trying to say, keeps the uh, rod or push rod um, guided very well. 
And then um, on the bolt carrier, it's not a bolted on, they don't just unbolt the gas key and put on a push rod key. It is milled into the bolt. That's, so that's a good thing. All right. Anyway, so getting back onto the gun now. The gun comes from the factory as you see it here. Um, it comes with these Troy style flip up sights. That's one thing that, you know, you're, you're in the AR-15 market, you're just not going to find a lot of that. You're not going to find a lot of flat top receiver ARs that are going to have, you know, you know, sights on them or backup iron sights in the factory. But these are SIGs, Troy style. I mean, when I say Troy style, if you look at them, they're pretty similar to Troy, or Troy sights. A little bit different, though. Um, they are very, very sturdy. You could shoot out to 400 meters with these and hit your target. Um, very good quality iron sights. SIG... You know, I don't want to say outdid themselves in the iron sights, but, you know, from what you would expect from a manufacturer's flip-up iron sights, these are top of the line. They're right up there with Troy, in my opinion. Um, just because it doesn't have the Troy name on it doesn't mean they're crap. They're very durable. There's no play whatsoever, no wobble. Very nice sights. Um, quad rail. This is SIG's zero-movement quad rail. Uh, this is a free-floated quad rail. There's literally zero movement at all. Like you can once it, when this puppy's put tightened on here, you can you can grab this and you can twist this. This is, does not move at all. So you could technically, if you wanted to, I don't know why you would, but mount an optic in here. Like I'm gonna get an Ag Hog um, 3.5 zoom by 35 millimeters and put that puppy right here. Um, also, comes stock with Magpul MOE furniture, six position buffer tube, by the way. Um, I love the Magpul MOE grip. I'm not a huge fan of the standard AR-15 grip. Another thing it has is bullet pictorials for the safe position and the fire position, something I really like. Um, you know, this is everything I was looking for in an AR-15. I thought I was going to have to spend, you know, a couple thousand bucks and build one like this, but I didn't have to because I found one. Um, another thing that I really like about it, if you look here, your bolt stop is a, um, it looks like a normal bolt stop, except this is extended here. This comes out here, so when you pull the bolt back, you can push this in to lock the bolt back without a magazine, and they're easier. Something I can give SIG, went over the top again with that. Um, Ambi mag release. Very nice feature. I'm right-handed, but, you know, hey, still a very nice feature. The bolt design is a little, bolt carrier design is a little different, as you can clearly see. It's got this cutout right here. Um, could be weight reducing. I don't really know why they did it. It's probably just something they did in their design. But you know, you can also, if in the rare circumstance your charging handle breaks, you could probably override this with something. Um, you know, I have I have a Leatherman Mutt, which is a bolt override tool in it. But yeah. Um, also, one thing that Sig went over the top, and something that I was going to put on an AR-15 if I was going to do my own build for myself, was going to be this style of sling attachment right from the factory, forged into the receiver. As you can see, these push-button sling mounts are very, very nice. And it's got, what has it got, six of them? One here, one here, one here, one here, and then on the other side as well. Very, very nice sling mounts. You can do a, a one-point, a two-point, or a three-point sling on this puppy. Um, I personally, it comes with the sling too. Um, the sling it comes with is, you know, I mean, it's it's not a a uh, bungee cord style sling or anything like that. It's a bungee sling. It's just your basic, you know, nylon strap sling. Very very thick though. Very durable. Very high quality sling from Sig. You can use it as a one point or you can use it as a two point sling. Works very well. Um, that's another thing I'll give. Also, another thing that I like about this gun, the way it comes from the factory. It comes with a P-Mag, you know, as you can see unloaded. Um, not a fucking crappy ass aluminum magazine. I hate those things, they're crap. Um, you can step on them and they'll break. Steel magazines, okay. You know, if you get an anti-tail follower, steel AR mags are okay. But P-Mags are the way to go in my opinion. Brownells right now has a deal, tw 10 of these for $107, holiday special. Go ahead and go to brownells.com and buy them because that is the cheapest I've seen these P-Mags in maybe a year or two, especially with all the crap going on right now with the gun control. Um, go ahead and buy them. I just, you know, 
this the whole setup here the one i got like i said this is the olive drab you know style i don't really want you olive drab contrast but you know what i really you know not all that much about how it looks so i just went and bought the uh the black magazines which still look pretty damn cool you know looks are important but you know I'm not going to solely build a gun or set, a, set up a firearm around the way it looks. Functionality is number one. All right. Again, 10 of these, 107 bucks per ounce. That comes all back. Um, let's see. What else can I say about this gun? Oh, another thing is, is this gun, the receiver on this firearm is over, not overbuilt. When I say overbuilt, I mean it in a good way. I mean, like, it is a little bit thicker and a little bit more substantial than your standard AR-15 receiver. And what I mean by that is if you look at these here, like, if you look at these, uh, like this blocker here to keep you from accidentally hitting the mag release, and this here, this piece here on the upper, the strengthening bar, is a little bit more, little bit more thicker. It's, it's noticeably a little thicker um, from what I can tell. Um, looks a little bit thicker which is a good thing. I've said that three times already. That must be getting sickening. All right, as well as over here, as you can see for the Ambi Mag release as well. And it seems like that the upper may be just a tad bit thicker. I mean, I'm not talking, you know, like a millimeter even, not even a millimeter, but it just seems like it looks like it's more substantial um, than a standard AR receiver. Um, but yeah, overall, if you're looking for a piston AR, you're looking for a good AR, a good reliable AR-15, this is the way to go. Go with the SIG 516. I love this rifle. It, like I said, it was everything I was looking for. It needed to have a flat top receiver, quad rail, free floated quad rail, uh, six position stock, flip up iron sights, gas piston, chrome line, chrome chamber. I got, every, got everything I wanted this rifle. Um, this rifle, if you're asking about the price, this rifle range anywhere, I bought it for 3800 bucks. Now that's the lower end of what you're going to see on this rifle. I bought it from a gun shop who's a very good, they're a very good gun shop and they price stuff the lowest they can to barely make money on it. Higher end, you're going to see their MRSP is 16, 1660, I think. You're going to see it all the way up to seven grand at some places, which I have. Um, but as far as, you know, comparing this, you know, to like, let's say an H&K 416, honestly, the H&K 416 is great. But you're paying for the guy. You're paying for the name. You're paying three thousand bucks for the name. I mean, honestly, um, it's a great rifle. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the one difference in this is in one of the people on Sig's design team actually one of the people who helped design this rifle was actually one of the people who helped design the H and K 416. Um, the only difference is really, as far as functionality goes. Is the H and K is a self-regulating piston or a self-regulating gas system, which I do not think is suppressor ready out of the box, but I could be wrong in that. But that's what I've heard. Um, this gun overall, you're getting a fantastic weapon with a lot of extra features in a, in a rifle from the factory. I would say honestly, you get more for your money going with this than you do an H and K 416 by far. I think you get a great rifle, accurate rifle, durable rifle. And you could spend that fourteen hundred bucks and you get up to your three grand. So you get you could spend three grand and you can get an HK four sixteen, or you can spend three grand and get an HK or and get the uh, SIG five sixteen with an egg hog on it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's what I think anyway. You know, like I said, not dissing it, not dissing the four sixteen, but I think you're mainly paying for the name with that gun. Um, just like with anything H and K. Oh, and another thing I didn't mention about this rifle too. Um, you know how with AR fifteens, you know, after a while you shoot them, or even sometimes when you get them new. Uh, your upper and lower will have some slop. Here, let me show you. Sig did uh, did something different here that I haven't seen on too many other AR-15s. If you look in there, you can see right there. There's that little thing that right behind the uh, selector switch in front of the buffer. There's something that looks like a little pin sticking up. That's a spring-loaded pin that puts constant pressure right here to keep that receiver from getting all rattly on you, which is something, you know, that I can really appreciate, because that was one big, big thing with me with an AR-15, and, you know, people are going to be like saying on my comments, well, you love the AK-47, that's a rattly fucking, yeah, it is, but that's the way it was designed. A rifle like this, tight tolerances, yeah, that's the way it was designed, but yeah, this is a rifle, very reliable, 
Love the rifle. Um, as far as custom customization goes with this rifle, as with any gas piston thing, and this is the drawback to the gas piston system. Um, you can't really just go out and buy all these just different rails and stuff for the top. You got to kind of stay with the SIG rail. I mean, because their piston goes, I mean, not only would you have to get a different delta ring, but, uh, or I mean, not delta ring, barrel nut. Um, because it has the gas system, you know, this channel is slightly bigger, obviously, quite a bit bigger than the um, standard DI2. So, yeah, that's the one drawback. Uh, but as far as piston rifles go, the reason they're so damn reliable is because with the direct impingement, you have gas going through a tube onto the gas key on top of the bolt carrier and literally vents all the gases from that round into the um, receiver. All right, into the receiver, upper and lower receiver. That'll just get gummed up after a while and start to seize up, and it's a dirty-ass fucking system. With the piston system, I have fired 240 rounds of this, receiver is perfectly clean inside and the bolt is you know not searing hot you can still hold it um, the one you know the one place the piston the pistons do get hot is the gas block gas block gets pretty damn hot but that's with any piston gun you know but you're not holding a gas block you're holding right here with the uh, hand guards do not get hot or the quad rail does not get hot on a piston system either um, from what I've noticed compared to a DI you fire a couple hundred rounds through a DI pretty quick and that hand guard is starting to get hot um, but yeah, that's the review on this rifle. If you guys got any comments or questions, feel free to send me a message. Spartan 765 out.